Today we're going to install the standard Hayward wall mounting kit for this style of pump. As you can see, it's been repackaged, so there are two model numbers. I've shown both of them here. This is going to allow my pump to operate remotely so I don't have to walk outside. I can operate it from the screen enclosure. We're going to jump right into it, so let's get started. I think this kit cost about 60 something dollars on Amazon. I picked it up, which for some plastic is yeah, pretty substantial, but considering it's a custom pool part, it wasn't too bad. I thought it would be like a couple hundred dollars. I think we're going to put it uh, somewhere about here, essentially located above the salt chlorinator. Top portion goes on the pump, the bottom portion goes on the wall. This is the only part we'll be using inside the screen enclosure, directional, obviously, to, to mount. This is where the cable will come through. They've also provided a block for the Cat 6 to plug in. Pick a nice centrally located spot right here. The stucco is quite even. I've dropped the first anchor so we'll be able to level it. Very good. Mounting portion's done. I'll clean up my mess. We'll continue. Clean up the mess. Give the box a quick inside now cleaning. Before I begin this, I want to reiterate that the cable installation project is, is not going on now. That said, I know that this much is going to be installed, and I'm going to be running some Panduit nice and clean, breaking off with a 90, and then another 90 coming down this way. At that point, I don't know what's going on, if there's going to be a, a breakout box for low voltage or signal cables or what have you. So I'm going to make this part of the installation done, but I'm just going to stop it right here. So we're going to do that now. This is the type of Panduit I'm using. It's a locking Panduit uh, C10 type cord mate. And we can see that if it folds over and locks, makes a good seal, has a backing to it. If that backing doesn't stick, I could use an alternate type of glue to hold it in place. That in turn will come down. I have some, some 90 fixtures. You can see that the bends provide for some grace. Here's the locking portions of the bends. And then I have this room right here, so we don't need to measure right up to the end points. We have room to allow the cables to curve around. Take that into account. And there's the first piece locked in with the piece of Cat 5E. And with that installed, I could now tighten down this piece. Our second piece will go this way. Now I've got the second run in place. And then we go, there's that third little piece just dropped on. And from here, it'll just be a loose cable until I do the cable rewiring project. I'm gonna kill the pump breaker. Is the RS-45 connector that we're going to be using with our CAT6 cable. I'm going to remove this connector from it now. As the plate will be sealed from the top, the access is now on the side. And here's the plug. Now you could get a special fitting that goes in with a grommet to do this. Now what I'm going to do is just drill a small hole that'll fit the CAT6 through here. And then I could seal it with RTV through this hole and screw this right back in. That'll be just fine. You can do what you want, but this is what I'm going to do. If you're going to do this method like I am, I recommend you to start with a small pilot like I am here, slowly working your way up till it fits the CAT6 cable. Here we can see everything fits snug, just to the right size. I remember my cable's all going to be redone, so I'm just going to use some outdoor rated silicon to seal this once everything's in place. So I'll be able to remove it and redress it later. If I cut everything to size and I need longer cable, I got to start this all over. Something to keep in mind. With that, I'm going to screw this modified plug right back in to the pump. We can't cross this middle portion here with any slack because there's a divide for the cover for signal and AC voltages. You can't see that right now, but it is there. So it would go like this. And we'll just mark that right there. I'll give myself some some room to work.
take this piece out. We can work on it from outside the unit. We have 12 volts, we have negative, and then we have A and B. So I'm gonna use the green from the white green twisted pair for the common. I'm gonna use the orange from the twisted pair for the 12 volts, don't want any shine. Now the actual signal that's going through, and I'm not gonna use brown, so I'm just gonna clip that off right there. The actual signal I want twisted pair, I'm gonna want A on blue and B on blue white. So I'm gonna strip those two. So there we go, the signals are twisted pair, green is ground, orange is 12 volts. Bend that under push this in. Now our signals are connected. None of the other wires are used. We'll leave this open for now. We'll come back to it. The kit came with this connector, which will be connecting to this cable now. With the color code that we've established on the pump side, we'll be translating that over to this side using information provided in the book. First thing I'm going to do is strip everything away, cut back the brown lead. Not entirely, but just take it out of the equation. The connector sits in like this, so this is pin one, it's labeled here on the circuit board. So we have to keep that in mind when we make these connections, that that's gonna be pin one. Very important that we don't do this backwards. I'm gonna mark that just like that. And so here we have the transcription from the pump. We're now gonna connect the front panel and test it just to make sure everything's working okay. That'll hold just like that for now. It's good enough for a test. Now I'll go turn on the power. Well, we have power, but it says check wiring between display and drive. Hmm. I discovered that I broke the A wire, the actual serial connection. Uh, I, I went and fixed it. It wasn't hard to find. We're gonna plug it back in. We're gonna try it again. There we go, there's no error. Watch it prime. There we have it. Pump is operational. Everything's looking good. So yeah, broke a cable while I was uh, inserting the plug. I've realized you don't wanna tighten down those screws really tight because it will pinch the uh, copper and then it will cause it to uh, have a weak point and crack it. So no worries there, I fixed those connections and we're gonna start buttoning this up now. I'm gonna start by clipping just a shine off of these leads from the old connection. I'm gonna put a little piece of heat shrink over these and then just shrink it down. I'm gonna leave that connector as is, there's no need to do anything with it. Place this cover back on now. Now place our new remote cap cover on top. And that's it, this seal, this is done. I'm gonna put some silicon here. Again, if you wanna buy the correct liquid tight fit for this, go ahead and buy it. I'm gonna be modifying this as I had mentioned as part of a bigger project, so I'm not ready to commit myself to final fitment. I'm gonna put some uh, silicon, outdoor silicon here to seal this up for now. Now we'll bring this unit back up into its final position, uh, checking to see if I get a communication alarm as I do this, which would indicate that I've broken something again. There we go. These are rubber gasketed, so you don't need to go crazy tightening this down. That's it. Let's clean it up. So here it is, the full presentation. Control the pool pump. I'll just hit resume for normal operation. It's now controlled from within the enclosure here, the patio. You don't have to go out beside the pump to administrate whatever you have to do. Here priming now. Straightforward project, really simple. Uh, makes it a lot more convenient able to administer the pool pump right here by the salt chlorinator which is turning on now 
See the flow sensor blinking. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the relocation of the control panel for this series of Hayward pool pumps. I hope you found it helpful. Hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Hit subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?